All right, we're going to start with the mathematical foundation for Schnorr's signature, and that is a discrete log assumption. Now, in the most crypto setup, we're working with what is called a cyclic group, G, with some generator element, lowercase g. So this is a generator. And uh, for a given alpha, and then you can calculate u equal g to the alpha's power very easily. Assume the multiplication in this group is easy. But however, the discrete log, the reverse, is not easy. In other words, it's kind of a one-way function here. So in other words, the d log of try to figure out you know, given you try to figure out alpha, that's difficult. That's our assumption. And here, the calculation here is easy. Now in the crypto, that is based on discrete log. Usually, you generate some random value alpha in this element, and this this group usually have 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 a big order, you know, maybe order, order Q, this is, this is big, usually, you know. this is like a, maybe 256 uh, bits in the binary, you know, other could be as big as 200, 200 power, so the, the big uh, search space, if you want to do like a brute force search. Now, you assume your alpha is your private key, and you may be your public key. So usually, now in this setup, let's say we're going to have the R and U as a key pair. Uh, yeah, key pair. This is a private key and this is a public key, right? Now in this identification protocol, usually you try to prove, you know, yourself, right? You, you log into Google. You try, you try to prove you are who you claim to be by sending out the username and the password to Google. So in typical identification protocol, there is a prover and there is verifier. So in the Google case, you are the prover, right? And Google's service is a verifier, verify your passwords, right? Now in this um, identification protocol. So usually there's like three um, steps. Of course, the first step is, is assume you have this setup, right? In this group with generator, you have a key pair here. That's the initial setup. Once you have the setup, the step number one is that proof of send commitment. It's a message. How to send that message? Usually, you pick a random number from the group, right? But you send the commitment here, T, right? What is the T here? T is what you send. You send T, right? As G to the over T. Right? This is your commitment. Now, the second step, the very, very send a random challenge. C, so that's a challenge. Now, upon receiving the challenge, you're going to send your proof. So Z would you approve here. The way you do it is you send alpha T plus alpha times C. Now don't notice that this is only private, right? This is a private. <laughs> now how would the verifier know you are the right guy? Now this is some mathematical manipulation here. The verifier just calculate g to the z 
because we know the z that you send right here it received here it received t right this is received g to the alpha alpha t let's call this is ut right and here is in c so you know ut this is a very very nosy here ut and you know c right and you know z right so here g to the z's power is equal to alpha t plus alpha c and g alpha t here happens to equal this one right equal ut and g to the alpha is a public key and then you can verify okay now because we assume the discrete log is difficult so even an somebody watch all these messages they couldn't figure out the value of alpha t or alpha right so in other words they can observe but they cannot break the system so if you send another challenge they are not able to answer this z here they won't be able to figure out this z value here okay this is secure and um, based on the assumption that discrete log is difficult right so in the typical what is called a sigma protocol why you call sigma because we do three ways right we go back and then and then go back it's kind of a multiple round of communications so this is just a special case of sigma protocol so usually again in the sigma protocol you have a prover you have a verifier right and in generally the step number one is you send a commitment right it's commitment t And then the verifier is going to send a challenge. And then somehow you send your proof. Z is your proof. Okay? And then somehow you have some verification. Now, usually you need to base on some one way function somewhere so that people can observe your exchange of T, C, Z, and, and then you know it's only the person who have the right secret here can send a valid z here right so this is a fundamental like what is called a sigma protocol there's uh, many different variants of it but schnorr identification protocol is one example right here's a uh, this is a commitment message this is a challenge and this is my my proof right and the verify through this mathematical uh, relationship. All right, so we're gonna introduce uh, a Fiat Shamir signature scheme from a you know Sigma identification protocol. So in the identification protocol, the prover would send a commitment first, and then the key here is that the verifier would send back a challenge. And this is a random challenge, right? So this is a random. And then um, the, pro the prover is able to generate, you know, a signature or a proof that is associated with the C, right? And then at the end, the verifier would verify. This is a sigma protocol the, on the general, you know, uh, three steps. Now, how to turn that into a signature, right? So, for all the signatures in this scheme here, the, uh, the, the Fiat Shamir uh, signature scheme, we assume that uh, there is uh, a key gem, right, by the prover. So, you have, a, you have a secret key and you have a public key, right? So this is public, this is this is a secret, this is a public, right? You have a key pair. Now in in this interactive you know process, in the signature scheme, we want to make it non-interactive. So that the input here is gonna be 
for a message, right? So you want to sign a message, right? So message M is your input. Now, how do we do that? How do we, you know, have a similar construct but without the interactive element of it? So this, is, this steps is interactive put. So we try to make this non-interactive, right? The way to do it is we assume we have a hash function, all right? So a hash function is going to hash, you know, just as in the general construction, the message along with some commitment message T here, right? And the T is your commitment. Then this kind of replacing the C here. So we assume we assign that to C, all right? And we continue the rest. So for example, you're gonna get Z out of C, right? So, and then in the, uh, in, the only thing that we change is in the second step, right? So make this non-interactive, all right? So in, in terms of randomly generate a C, a change, we're going to use the hash function, you know, and, uh, you know, hash on the input image, input a message, and the commitment message that uh, the prover uh, did in the first step. All right, so that's um, pretty much then your signature. In this case, we usually use a sigma to represent the signature. Is a pair. Is a pair of what? It's commitment, right? And the Z that you calculate, all right? That would be your signature. And for the verification, you're going to rely on the public element of of the PK, of the you know common hash function that you use, and of the commitment that you know, right? So that's verifier can still do the verification. Right, so that's uh, the concept of turning the sigma protocol into a signature scheme. Now we we're gonna see a real example of turning the Schnorr identification protocol, which is a sigma protocol, into a digital signature scheme using the you know Feld um, Shamir scheme. So the key here is introducing um, the hash function. So you're going to have hash function to replace the random challenge, okay? So the key gene part is the same, right? So you're going to have your private key and your public key, right? This is your public key. This is u equal g to the alpha, right? So in the key gene phase, and you have hash function h. So for a given message, you know, What you do is you first get a commitment message. So T is a commitment message. You, you choose a random alpha, alpha T here. And then you let the let's commitment message be the G to the alpha T's power, right? So, and then in terms of C, the random challenge, is get it from what? From the hash function of your input message concatenated with your T. Right? So then how do we sign it? Where is the signature? Okay. So your signature here. Okay. Your signature. Which is a sigma. It's going to be your commitment message. Right? along with the one that you treat as C as intermediate step, but what you send is the, what is, what is called alpha T plus alpha C. And you know, alpha T and alpha are private. You know, you don't expose to the other people, but you're gonna 
use this as a signature. All right, so let's call this alpha z. Uh, actually, let's call this z. Okay, so this is your signature. So in other words, your signature is how to verify your signature, right? So the signature here is the tuple of t and z, right? Where t equal g to the alpha t, where z equal alpha t, right? Plus alpha, which is a private key, times c, which is a hash message, right? So the verifier you're gonna do, you're gonna have this hash function, right? So you calculate c from the hash function that you know, so which is the, the original message along with the t, right? So once you get the c, of course, you cannot calculate this. The verifier does not have this information. But the verifier, what you can, you know, do, just like in the, you know, original um, uh, Schnorr identification protocol, so you're going to verify that g to the z, which is your signature, uh, the second component, right? g to the z, right? So it's actually equal to g to the alpha t, right? And then g to the alpha, and then c is power. And what, what you notice that this is actually the commitment message, right? This is commitment message. And this is actually the public key. You know, so this is U is the public key and C is power. So you just need to verify this, you know, to say, so basically you're going to say, is this right, equal to T times UC? This is all, uh, you know, information that you know, right, from either the M, public key U, and the signature component Z, right? So this is pretty much how the Schnorr signature uh, works. So is based on uh, what is called uh, a typical um, Fiat Shamir signature scheme from a Sigma protocol. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you.